Welcome to part 11 of a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank. This is all about making the new steam turret. On screen are the basic metals that I'm going to use. And here is the old turret. This is OK, but it's a bit weedy. The bushes in the top of the boiler for the safety valves in the turret are all threaded half inch by 26 threads per inch. I'm having a quick look at different ways to make this. I could do it this way by fitting these bushes, but in my opinion that would look a bit too fussy. So I'm just going to use this half inch square piece of brass, and at the moment I'm painting it with some marking out blue. The other piece of metal in this image is going to be the shaft. It's not going to be as long as this, it's going to be a lot shorter, but it's very substantial and it's a piece of phosphor bronze. I'm trying to give this brass part a very good coating of marking out blue, so don't mark it in the wrong place. My marking out is terrible, but after all, I'm the only one who sees it, and it's really just to tell me where to drill the holes. I'm going to drill two 7 of an inch diameter holes and two 9 of an inch diameter holes. I'm not going to show the drilling operation, you can see the end product soon enough. The part of the drilling I do want to show though is this bit. Once I'd drilled and partially threaded the holes in the front of this piece of brass, I needed to drill a long hole all the way through the part. And yes, I know it's not in the centre, so please don't write in. The hole is offset to the front of the turret. If I drilled it in the centre, then there wouldn't be quite as much thread where the taps fit into the holes on the rear of the turret. Sometimes, you know, you have to think these jobs through before you start. And another thing, I did not have a twist drill of 964 of an inch diameter that would go all the way through this piece. In the next part of the job, I enlarged the hole part of the way down to 7 of an inch, and then I threaded this part of the way through using a quarter by 40 tap. Starting the thread in the drilling machine is a great idea, because that means that the thread is going to be concentric with the hole that you've drilled. I turned the part over and drilled through with the 964 drill until the holes met up in the middle, and then once again I enlarged the end of it with the 7 32nds drill, and here I'm using the tap to thread it part of the way down. I will eventually complete the threading operations on the bench. In this clip I'm drilling a 9 32nds of an inch diameter hole right in the middle underneath. This is where the standard that will support the crossbar will screw into. Really, I don't have to thread it, but I thought, no, belt and braces approach, thread it too, and thread the other end, which you'll see shortly, and once it's all silver soldered together, it will be incredibly strong. After I'd completed the threading of the half inch piece of brass, I tried a test fit with the steam valves I'm going to use. They will all need shim washers to align them, but I will cover that when I put it together once and for all in a future episode. This is the old turret, and I just need to take a measurement to see how long the standard needs to be. And as you can see on the ruler, 7 eighths of an inch is the magic number. I temporarily fitted a whistle valve to the manifold as well. But now, enough of such frivolity, it's down to another machining job. I'm going to make the standard, and at the moment I'm reducing this piece of phosphor bronze bar down to exactly half an inch in diameter, after which I will thread it half inch by 32 threads per inch. This is the final sizing cut, and if you look you can see a bit of a ring at the end, where I used the micrometer to find out how close I was. Now it's time to centre drill the standard, and then, before I forget, because I do sometimes, I'm drilling a hole down the centre because a steam turret is no good if the steam cannot get from the boiler to the controls on the turret. Now it's time for a bit of human power. I'm threading this using one of my tailstock die holders, and this standard die holder is not supported by the tailstock chuck, but to start the thread, the tailstock chuck presses firmly against the die holder, making sure that it's correctly aligned to the piece of metal that I'm threading. After a while, you can remove the tailstock chuck, I removed it a while ago, and here I'm winding off the die stock to reveal the half inch by 32 threads per inch thread. After refitting a carbide tip lathe tool, I can continue with the turning operation. First of all, I turn down the external diameter of the piece of phosphor bronze to the diameter of the bush. Then by using this tool, I take a plunge cut to put an angle on it, and then using the parting tool, I turn the centre part down to just under half an inch. 
Now reverse the component in the chuck, you can see the chamfer. I need to turn the end of this piece of phosphor bronze down to 5 sixteenths of an inch. And once I did that, I drilled the hole, because at the moment the hole I originally drilled wasn't deep enough. Here you should get the idea of what I'm doing. I've screwed the phosphor bronze part into the brass part. But I haven't tightened it fully, there's a very slight gap. This is always a good idea, because you need the silver solder to flow in as far as it can. I was generous as usual with the silver solder to simulate welding. Time now to delve into the depths of the acid bath in the outer part of the workshop. I load the component into the acid bath and I left it there for 24 hours. The acid isn't very strong, as you can see by the bones. And 24 hours later I took it out of the acid bath, cleaned it up, and here it is. This is a test fit. I try one shim washer to see how far I need to turn the part for it to go fully down onto the bush and face the right way. In this clip I'm doing a test fit of the turret using two shim washers and I think this is possibly going to be the right amount. I think the bottom part looks a lot better than a big hexagon bit. I suppose I could have made a dummy flange, but this will be fine. This locomotive is after all definitely not a scale model. The amount of shim washers is correct, this will tighten into place when I'm ready. The turret is created, it just needs populating. That will be in a future episode. Just for a change, I will say, stay safe, stay well, stay relatively sane, and stay fit and healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.